Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The truth about Bobby Spencer's work in Amsterdam is exposed, and her tearful funeral is held today on General Hospital. When Carly gets home, she sits at her makeup table and stares at a picture of Bobby wearing a necklace. Felicia follows suit at her house. Joss and Michael greet Lucas when he gets home. As she descends the stairs, Carly gives her brother a hug. How will they get through this, she wonders. He is unaware, but they will find out. James, who is spending the day in the stables with Cody, speaks with Maxie at her apartment. When Felicia and Anna come, they all hug. There is a picture of Bobby on the G.H. memorial wall. As Laura examines it, Spencer appears, and they give each other a hug. Together, Sam, Dante, and Sonny travel to the funeral. After getting a call, Carly heads over to Kelly's. When Liz called, she didn't think she would arrive. The Kelly sign was blown down and broke by the previous night's storm. Carly finds it hard to believe Aunt Ruby designed this and that it happened today of all days. Liz promises to paint a new sign and refer to it as an honor. At the church are Carly, Drew, Joss, Michael, and Lucas. When Joss's mother hears that they are there for her, she responds that she is too. As they walk into the church, they notice Bobby's picture on the altar. People start to enter the church shortly after. Carly welcomes Dante, Sam, and Sonny. Dante informs her that Lulu thought the world of Bobby and that she was an amazing person. Sonny declares to Carly that he will miss Bobby and that he adored her. Upon arriving, Anna, Maxie, and Felicia observe a college of Bobby's pictures at the church entrance. Felicia reports that she is currently with BJ and Tony, and Maxie remembers that following the transplant, Tony listened to BJ's heart beat in her chest. Felicia views the fact that she remembers that time as a blessing. They enter the church. Willow apologizes to Michael for being late when she arrives. She explains that Monica was feeling under the weather, so she talked her into staying at home. Laura tells Carly that she will miss her mother a lot as she and Kevin approach her in Lucas. Carly appreciates Laura's willingness to deliver the eulogy. Joss receives an apology from Trina and Spencer regarding her grandmother. Tracy expresses her condolences to Carly for her loss, which also happens to be the town's loss. Carly was happy to assist her in managing Luke's relationships with her mother. Tracy claims that she was impressed by Bobby's commitment to Luke. Tracy approaches Lucy as soon as she appears. Lucy refuses to engage with her at this time. Tracy believes that regardless of their current disagreement, they ought to declare a ceasefire for Bobby today. Lucy concurs. Arriving are Christina and Alexis. In honor of Bobby, Alexis lights a candle, and Christina is reminded of how much Bobby supported her during the Kiefer nightmare. Alexis remembers chatting to Bobby, a fellow victim of domestic abuse, during that time. Laura checks in on Scott, who seems to be struggling to find something to say today. Looking across, Maxie notices an unidentified woman and asks Anna if she knows who she is. Although they can't know them all, Anna claims that Bobby has assisted a lot of people throughout the years. As the music begins to play, Bobby's coffin is carried in. Following the introductory prayer, Laura pays tribute to her friend and sister-in-law. Laura describes Bobby as the most upbeat person she had ever encountered and as someone who led from her heart. She also saw the good in everyone and fought for the causes she supported. She refers to Bobby as an encounter that she will miss. The next to speak is Scott, who admits that, unusually for him, he is at a loss for words. He has no idea how to honor someone like Bobby, who had a unique group of pals that included Richard Simmons, the fitness expert, and an Aztec princess. It wasn't until today that Scott understood they were destined to be best friends. He touches her coffin and expresses his sadness for her. Liz takes the stage to talk about Bobby, claiming that she used all of the bad things in her life to create something beneficial. She transformed it into fortitude and recovery. Liz claims that she was the first to extend her hand to anyone in need and that she was a helpful, 
She wants to make Bobby proud by carrying that out at G.H. When Carly does speak at last, she discusses her special bond with Bobby, whom she didn't meet until later in life. She acknowledges that when she moved to Port Charles, she was a schemer and a mess, and Bobby was one of the people who helped her improve. She claims Bobby accepted and forgiven her, and she giggles as she remembers that Bobby also assured her that she would never put up with her. She sees Bobby in her children and is aware of how different and similar they were. She declares that the world would be a very different place without her mother and that she loves her. After the funeral, Maxie goes in search of the enigmatic woman she had earlier seen. If she knew Bobby, she queries. The woman introduces herself as a reporter named Angela Brighton, Brighton Hertford, who worked with Bobby and is currently covering her for a story. Felix tells Lucas how much he adored Bobby and that they perform together at the nurse's ball when they catch up. He says that everyone will miss her. Carly is approached by Felicia, who compliments her on the lovely service. She is greatly appreciated by Carly for being her mom's friend. They have something essential to tell the reporter, Maxie adds as she interrupts them. Bobby, Carly, and Felicia sit with the reporter at Kelly's. Angela tells how she worked with Bobby when stationed in Amsterdam, where they first met. While her mother was resolving Luke's affairs, Carly was perplexed. Angela discloses that she was also collaborating with a group that assisted women in escaping human trafficking. Carly queries how her mom became involved. Angela provides specifics working behind the scenes for an organization. Bobby confided in her about her own experience as a teenage prostitute, although at the time the term trafficking hadn't been used. According to Angela, Bobby was crucial in assisting several women in escaping. She wanted to write the piece for that reason, but Bobby was unable to discuss it extensively without endangering one of her insider contacts. Bobby was also attempting to figure out how to obtain asylum for a woman who was being sought after by numerous individuals. She doesn't know if the woman arrived in the U.S. safely. Felicia follows Carly outside to see how she's doing. Carly claims she was aware of something more going on. Who was the previous victim her mother was attempting to save? And what became of them? Carly claims they have a lead. But Felicia insists they don't have one without Bobby's contact information. When Tracy gets to Carly's house, Carly says she needs her assistance. Carly tells her about Bobby's covered activities in Amsterdam and expresses her desire to ensure the safety of the final woman her mother was attempting to save. What Bobby started, she intends to complete. Tracy claims that she is genuinely unaware of Bobby's secret. She is asked to recall anything out of the ordinary by Carly. Tracy claims that Bobby frequently went missing and that she once followed her to a cafe, where Tracy believes she frequented. Carly queries what the location's name was. Outside Kelly's, Felicia reflects on her past experiences with Bobby. When Maxie and Angela emerge, Felicia hopes Bobby realizes how much she would have sacrificed for her. If someone hasn't already informed her, she informs the reporter that she has kind eyes. According to Angela, empathy is a necessary component of the work. Felicia chooses to go home by herself while reflecting on Bobby. She informs Angela that meeting her was pleasant. After Felicia leaves, Angela observes that Maxie and her mother share a unique bond. Maxie claims to be the greatest, and Angela agrees with her. Angela follows Maxie inside, and Maxie remarks that she admires her commitment to completing this piece. Maxie urges her to come back here tomorrow and assures her that she won't be let down. She offers to connect her up with individuals in Port Charles who know Bobby. Return to Carly's, Carly informs Drew and Joss that she is heading to Amsterdam to complete the task her mother began. They claim to be proud of her, and Bobby is the one who would be most proud. Felicia shows in with her bag and offers to accompany Carly as she leaves with hers. When Drew called, she informed her of her new knowledge. As a former PI, Felicia can assist her. Bobby gave her purpose in life, and she owes her everything. Carly advises them to head out quickly as they have an aircraft to board. Regarding the next general hospital, tomorrow in Amsterdam, the mystery will continue. Robert says to Anna, 
I'll make you a few calls. Liz and Lucy discuss Bobby with the reporter. Bobby never made me feel ashamed, adds Liz. I guess I'm one very lucky woman, observes Lucy. Maxie believes she can handle this. Felicia believes she has seen Bobby's contact in the cafe in Amsterdam. Carly tells someone about the previously unknown aspect of her mother. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.